In today's video, we're going to be drawing a traditional style panther. What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to draw a traditional style panther tattoo design. So without further ado, let's get straight to today's video by going to the overhead. Alright guys, welcome back to the table. So in today's video, we're going to be drawing a panther. This is a traditional, classic, iconic American traditional tattoo design. We're doing it on a piece of A5 sketch paper. Well, it's actually A4 and I've folded it in half. And there's actually a good reason that I do this. I like to fold my paper in half because I'm working on a wood surface. So I like to fold it in half just to give me a little bit more, I suppose, sponginess or a bit more softness to the paper. Anyhow, uh, we're doing this on a sort of smaller scale, being that this is a traditional tattoo flash. They generally did these a lot smaller back in the day, so they could be tattooed quickly, and the designs were quite simple as well. I've got a mechanical pencil with a 0.5 size lead, and I've also got an eraser in case we make mistakes and we need it. Okay, jumping straight into our design here, we're gonna start by laying out some foundation shapes. So I'm gonna first put in the chest or the ribs sort of area of our design. So just dropping in a large oval shape like this. Above that, I'm gonna drop in another circle for our head shape. So I'm just gonna put that slightly off center for the shape of our head. Now you can actually slim out the shape of your rib cage a little bit from here. So just cut off some of those the sides of your circle a little bit to slim it out leaving the shoulder area a little bit broader. And we're gonna come from the back of the head here and add in the back of our neck, transitioning over the top of our back for our spine shape. And we're gonna have a slight curve off it like this. And then just underneath this, we're gonna do an oval shape, which will give us basically where our hips will sit. From this point, I like to drop in the shoulders so I'm gonna have one claw sitting just underneath our head here. So I'll drop in a circle for this shoulder. And then I'll drop in wherever I want the claw to sit. So I want it to sit about here and the elbow is gonna be bent. So you can just draw in a little curve to represent that. Like this. On the other side, I want the claw to be reaching up and sort of gripping up this area here. So the shoulder will be drawn slightly higher up and the claw will be extended like this. So just dropping in circle for the shoulder and the claws. I like the uh, circles for the paws to be nice and big. Panthers or any large cats, they have really big paws. And the bigger you make those paws without of course going into a new school and making them look ridiculously large, um, the bigger you make them, the more sort of aggressive and powerful your cat will be. Okay, coming in to drop in shapes for our bottom half. I'm gonna do a big oval shape coming off the sort of spine here. This is for one of our thighs. Just underneath this, I'll drop in one of the paws and we'll draw in the connecting areas later on. On the other side, we're gonna drop the thigh down. Again, just coming off where the spine is there. I'll drop another smaller oval underneath it and the paw will sit behind this oval. Okay, and to draw in the shape of our tail, you just follow your spine down and flick it off with an S curve like that. Now, going into more detail on drawing in our paw shapes, once you've done your main sort of circle, that's like the paw pad or the fleshy area of the paw, you can drop in these smaller oval shapes, which are gonna be the individual toes on the paws. You want them to overlap slightly, especially the furthest one from the front. You want that to overlap quite a bit, but you're basically gonna do this for all the paws. So you've got this one at the front that's the most visible, and then the two overlapping, and the last one overlaps even more. The other thing to keep in mind is you want these to follow the shape of your oval. So this top curve of your oval, they're gonna slightly follow that shape. They're not gonna be completely flat in a straight line. Okay, coming in now to add some detail on our face. So what I'm gonna do is cut a line through the top sort of portion of the head there. And that's sort of where our eye is gonna sit. And you're gonna just follow that line out a little bit, drop it back, 
and connect it back into our circle and that's going to give you a rough sort of space for where our muzzle is going to sit so at the back of this just at the front of our circle there you can drop in a little circle shape for your eye and then going right to the back of the head here you can just drop in a down facing uh, V shape that angles slightly down like this and that'll give you the position for your ear just underneath your protruding area here you're going to drop down and back slightly and just pop in a small oval you want the oval to be a little bit lower than your main circle and then to link them up you're going to bring a curved line up to your circle shape curving around towards the eye there now that you've got some of the basic foundation shapes for your head here, we can go ahead and start giving a bit more detail and expression. So we're going to come around the front of the eye with this little loop that's just going to flick back and this is going to give that angry look and it's going to make it look like a little bit of an eyebrow ridge. You're going to come from behind this and do another one of those and that's going to continue around the shape of your head like that. To complete the muzzle area, you're going to come back towards the eye there and drop down with a little triangle shape and then bring this shape around to give you the muzzle on one side and you can drop in a couple of whiskers if you'd like and to do the other side you're pretty much just doing a small oval shape like this a lot less of it is going to be visible and the whiskers are going to be a lot shorter on that side as well. Now to join the bridge of the nose or the muzzle up with the rest of the face, I like to add a little bit more of a curve to it, just like that. But you can of course keep it more flat or depending on the shape that you desire. To link the bottom jaw to the muzzle area, you're going to trace around the little oval that you just did. Dip down and come back up. So you're tracing around, dipping in and coming back up to join. Okay, a couple more points on doing the face here. You can add a few dots to your muzzle as well. And then you're gonna add some teeth. So you're gonna just add a little peak or a little curved peak here. And one on the other side like that. And because this is quite a small design, I'm not gonna try and pack in all of the teeth. We're just doing the main sort of large teeth here. So two smaller peaks on the bottom as well. And then you're gonna come up and back down with a curved line. That's just gonna link back into the head like that. And then from the top jaw down with a curved line, which is the inside or the other side of the mouth there. The bottom side of your jaw here is just gonna link up by following your shape. So coming around, dipping in slightly and tracing that around. So you're actually not changing any of the design in that area. To add the detail in for the ear, you're basically gonna bring it, bring it down curve the end of it around slightly like this and then add a second curve in that links up with the tip of the ear. That's basically it for adding the detail. You're going to add a little pupil as well. Okay, so what about adding in the rest of the shapes? We've just got all these random circles and lines everywhere. So how do we start building up the shapes? So we're going to bring back from the top of the neck here, starting at our central line and we're going to come out to where our shoulder sort of starts and then you can just stop that line on the other side you're going to come in from underneath the cheek area here and you're going to bring a line back like that now these big cats have really wide sort of neck areas so don't stress too much you know i see a lot of really thin panther necks don't stress too much about making this too wide they're very muscular animals with quite large uh, necks to draw in the shape for our shoulder here, we're actually just gonna follow our circle, but we're not gonna connect it all the way. So just coming in from the bottom, you can trace your circle up and around. And when you get to this top area, you're just gonna bring it in and stop like that. For the section just underneath this, I actually wanna drop in another little circle here just for an elbow sort of area. And you're gonna come in from the, the paw area, dipping in slightly and back out. And then come out to that elbow area and stop. So you're just tracing off that little elbow shape. For the other side, what you're going to do is trace the 
sort of the general shape of your shoulder here. I might add a little bit of variance to it just with a little W curve in the middle there. And then just underneath this, you can bring a little S curve down into the body there. That will be the shoulder for the right side of the body. And for the arm area, you're gonna come from the paw back to the body with an S curve like that. And from the top of the paw, you're gonna go with a W curve like this and then just linking that up into the shoulder area there so that's actually sitting underneath our shoulder portion there okay linking up for the rest of the body so we've got these uh, sort of rib section here you want to make sure you follow that shape around and then you can dip in you got to dip in on this area so you, I've got the the hips here and the rib area here this is the section you want to dip in at that's the sort of slim portion of the body so again, coming from just underneath this uh, armpit area here, you're gonna come in and dip in before the line goes back out. That's gonna be the most slender point of your cat. Okay, drawing in the back hip here on the right side, we're going to draw a circle here for our knee and strengthen up our oval. So the circle should protrude just a little bit, like a millimeter out from where the knee is. And you're gonna come in from where the hip starts, come up to that knee area, and then come out a little bit for our knee. And then just drop a line back as well, like this, back into our hip shape. And then coming from the bottom of the hip, you can bring a line around, making sure there's a decent uh, gap between these two lines. And then just underneath this, Bring another curved line that just turns into a little S curve and flicks off at the end there. And that'll be the back of the heel sort of area. Okay, for the other back leg, what we're gonna do is we're gonna intersect with this, uh, the smooth curved line that we did here. We're just intersecting that to bring out a thigh muscle. And we're gonna drop that back in. So it's pretty much just a, a very extended W curve shape. Just underneath this, you bring another line out and drop it back into the calf sort of area. And you're gonna come up a little bit on this side and use the same shape line to join it back into the body. And this will give you the back of the calf area there or the uh, sort of thigh area there. Underneath all of this, you can just trace your shape down to the sort of foot area at the back. And do the same thing just tracing the shape down and then to join this area into the foot you're going to drop a line back and around and i like to split that off into two little curved sections at the back of the foot there to draw the main shape in for your tail you're just going to come off either side of your center line there right down to the end and I like to make the end nice and fat. So just throwing in a curve at the end there. On the other side, you're doing the same thing. And at one point it intersects with our center line there. So you're gonna follow that down until it widens out at the end there. So that's how we're gonna draw in the tail. Okay, so drawing in each of the individual paws, what we're gonna do is basically wrap around the bottom of our oval shapes adding in these curved peaks in between for the claws. So just coming up, adding in a curved peak and following it back around. You're gonna do that for each of them, just following the shape back around and adding in a claw. And then to join it back up into the foot, you can just use one of your W curve shapes to bring that back and join it up. So we're gonna do a similar thing up here, just coming around adding in a talon shape or a claw shape with a curved line and then following your little ovals around. So they're pretty straightforward. They actually give you a lot of guidage on this, uh, guidance on this. You're just following them around. In this top area, I'm actually going to curve that around slightly like that, the top of the paw there. And to join the bottom area up, I'll just come out 
burn back in like that. Okay, and once you've drawn all of your paws in, that's basically your panther finish. So it's a pretty straightforward design. We can go ahead and add background flowers if you want to, and you can go ahead and add whatever background elements you want. If you want to add some rocks in the background, make it more of a Japanese style design or some flowers, but I'm going to keep this one nice and simple and transfer it over to some watercolor paper so that we can start painting. All right, guys, once you've transferred it to watercolor paper, it is time to paint. I used a 1.5 size lining nib for this one and a 0.5 for a couple of the details in the face and the line down our spine there. Other than that, it was just the 1.2 for nice, solid, thick, traditional lines. All right, now, as usual, we're using Liquitex acrylic inks to paint this one. I've got some carbon black here and I've preloaded my palette. I have Pyrol Red and I've also got yellow orange, okay? Yellow orange Azo. So if you'd like to purchase Liquitex acrylic inks and paints along with me, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. So that's perfect for you guys to grab some of these Liquitex inks if you wanna help the channel out as well. Along with the inks, I've got two brushes. I have these are synthetic uh, Taclon brushes. I've got a number five and a number six. This is my uh, brush that I use to apply the ink. And the number six, the slightly larger, is my blending brush. And then I've also got a glass of water just for washing out the brushes and to help with some of the blending. Now I just want to quickly let you guys know that the sketch for this one and the build up, the framework of the design, is available in the class notes section if you are a member of my channel. And if you're not yet a member, there's a link in the description to sign up. So to start off with, we're going into carbon black, just solid carbon black, and we're gonna go in and start to paint some of the details on the face here. So to start with, I'm gonna do the little ridge above the eyebrow there, and we're doing that solid black, and we're just leaving a little strip of white on the edge of the eyebrow ridge there, and then bringing it back like this. For the area just above that, you're gonna take a little bit more black, doing the same thing, just making sure to leave that little white gap. And bringing that black all the way to the back area on the head there. And you can link them up towards the ear. Now coming down onto the ear, you're gonna bring a bit of carbon black down to the bottom line of the ear where we have that curve and then take your blending brush with a little bit of water and just blend that out to a gray as you move towards the top of the ear there okay nice and softly okay we're going to bring a bit of black underneath the chin here so just coming in from underneath the mouth with a little bit of our black and around that bottom lip area and then you can take your blending brush and just work that black down a little bit to a gray as you come down to your chin area there. And you can bring the carbon black up and around towards the bottom of the muzzle. You just wanna be careful not to get too close to your whiskers there. So I'm gonna bring that black back like this, not touching the whisker at all. And then gently blending that back towards the cheek sort of area. And generally when I do panther heads, uh, on a smaller design like this, I keep their faces a little bit lighter. Coming in between the whiskers as well with a bit of black, just being careful to leave a little bit of white around each of our whiskers there. Bringing that black back towards the cheek. And then just softly feathering that out towards your cheek. And you can just smooth out some of those edges if they're too harsh. And then the area underneath the eye, just above the top whisker there, you're gonna do the same thing. Just bring it back, leaving a little bit of a white gap there. And then with your blending brush, just bringing that black to a gray and blending it around to join into our cheek shape there. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more black to that area just underneath the eye that we did. And we're gonna blend that up towards the top part of the head there and you want to leave just a little bit of a gray streak behind the eye there 
coming up towards that ear. And like I said, I, I try and leave the faces of these guys a little bit lighter as I move through the cheek area there. And for the top of the bridge of the nose, whatever you want to call it, I'll come in with a little bit of black from this back area where the eye is. And just gently blending that forward to a nice smooth gray. All right, let's bring a bit of that carbon black in from behind the neck here. So just starting on that line underneath the chin or the jaw and bringing some black back towards the sort of central line just underneath the ear and bringing that black back like this. When you reach that point where you're getting near to the spine, you can take some water and blend out to gray. And you want to hit white just before you hit that central line. So try to get white just before you hit the line. Now on the other side, you're going to come in just off the line. So touching onto the line, bringing some black down like this. And then you're going to shade that up towards the outer line of the neck there. Just gently making sure to leave that little white strip. Okay, coming in to do this shoulder area now. So we're basically going to start at the base of this line, bringing black up and around following our shape of the shoulder there and tapering back down towards the top. And then just take your blending brush and try to smooth that out and give you a nice sort of gray area. As you can see, I just turned the page a little bit here and that can sometimes help with your angle. But you wanna get that nice smooth transition from black to gray and then from gray to white before you hit that edge. And this is gonna give those little highlight areas that look so nice on these traditional Panther designs. Okay, once you've done that, you can bring the black right down to the line that touches our body there. And you want to follow the shape of your elbow now, coming around. Gently blending out that area as well towards our elbow, so to a grey. And then from grey, blending it into our white. Coming forward off there, tapering down to the wrist area with our black. Like this. And then I'll turn the page a little bit, get some water on my brush and just gently blend out some of that black. This basically just softens the edges and makes you transition to your highlights a bit smoother. You don't have to do it. I have seen people just do solid black, leaving those little white gaps. So it's not 100% necessary, but I think it looks a little bit nicer. As you come onto the actual pour itself, I like to stop at the wrist, blend, forward into the paw and into the bottom of each individual sort of toe okay and I do the paws a little bit lighter the same way that I do on the face there you can also bring a little bit of black from underneath the paw pad there and just blend that forward slightly making sure to leave that little white gap in between the two lines where they separate okay at this point you're gonna do a, a double highlight so one off the spine and one off the side of the rib cage sort of area there. So we're just gonna bring some black down, leaving a white gap like this around that rib cage sort of area. And you wanna get these blends in before you fill large solid areas because otherwise your ink dries and it becomes very difficult to work with. So if you need to, Work all your little blends and highlight areas first and then fill in large solid areas. So we've got that little highlight on the side of the ribs there. Then I can start filling in this larger area as I come back from where the shoulder and the neck joins towards our back here. And you want this highlight to start tapering down to the back a little bit. So just bring it around and taper it down to that spinal point. And then with a bit of water, you can just blend that out towards the spine. Again, you're leaving that little bit of white on the spine there. And make sure to blend that up into the neck a little bit so that there's not such a harsh transition. Once you've done this, we're going to continue down to the leg here. 
So just coming in from that area, we're gonna add another highlight on the thigh area here. So tapering down to that line, the highlight gets a bit bigger and then tapers down again. And we bring that right to the spine on this area and separate down to where the tail is, okay? And now we can work our little highlight out. A little bit of water on the end of your brush. And then really just softening that edge out, just gently feathering it out to a gray so that we have that nice smooth transition. Continue to bring that black down from that area to the back of our thigh area here. And we're gonna again do a double highlight. So we're doing a highlight on the outside and the inside of the leg, tapering down to the point at which it joins back into the leg area. So just bring that highlight down. With a bit of water, we can just feather that edge off ever so slightly. Hopefully give us a nice smooth transition like that. And on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing, just coming around the back of this little bend or this little fold in the muscle. Okay, like that. And again, I'll turn my page and just gently soften that out towards the point where I want the highlight to sit on the edge of that uh, thigh muscle there. Okay, we're gonna do one more of the sort of double highlight on either side for the calf area. So just bringing down a bit of black like this, tapering it up and blending that out to one side. And then on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing with the black, just bringing it down on a bit of a taper. And then very gently just feathering that out towards our edge. Now for the paw at the very bottom here, you're gonna do basically the same thing we did with the uh, topmost paw there. You're going to bring down a bit of black onto the wrist, and then we're just gonna blend that around. I just wanna leave, make sure I leave little white highlight areas around the actual contours of our paw there, okay? So just bring that down and around the bottom of the foot. And for the back area here, you're just gonna bring black down and leave white around your line work there. It'll act as a bit of a highlight and just help separate things a little bit. Now for the side of your tail here, you can pretty much bring solid black down from where you were working earlier. So at the top of the hip there, bringing solid black down and around, it's gonna taper off towards the bottom here. And again, we're just gonna blend up to the highlight uh, or the spine line there, sorry. So wherever you've drawn that spinal line in, you can gently blend up towards that line to give you a little streak of white that traces down the back of the tail, at least at the start of the tail there, okay? Now from this point, essentially what you wanna do is copy the exact same method for the other side of the body. You're gonna come in with your Pyrol Red, just a little spot of it and you just wanna color in your tongue. Now, because we've done all of our black shading already, you can do the tongue solid red. You don't need to mess around with any specific blending. I'll do a little bit of red in the nose as well. If you've got a pink, you can of course substitute colors here and use pink for the nose for a slightly more realistic color. And I'll take a bit of red and drop it into the base of our ear like this, the back sort of portion of our ear, and then just with a bit of water, you can gently blend that red forward and out to give you more of a pink color coming down into the ear there. I'll take a little bit of our uh, yellow orange azo and I'll use that for our eye. Just doing our eye a solid yellow color like that. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and color in your teeth with that yellow as well. That's again, something that's pretty common with these traditional style Panthers. And the very last thing we're gonna go ahead and do is take a red uh, super fine tip or ultra fine point Sharpie and go ahead and do the little scratch marks that you sometimes see with these designs. It's not completely necessary, but it is a little bit of fun. And I just draw in these scratch marks coming from where the claws sit. 
and they look really cool. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is you can add a little bit of a background glow to this one. Just take a bit of Pyrrol Red and go into some of your little gap areas around your panther. And with your blending brush, you can blend those out gently. And you can get that nice little background glow effect that you have with some of these uh, traditional style designs. So I like to just pick little areas where there's little nooks and crannies. And then take your blending brush and smoothly blend that red out to a nice tone there. And you can of course add as few or as many of these little areas as you would like to add a little glow and a bit of a traditional style background to your design. Just adds a little bit more color to it and makes things stand out a little bit more. And that's basically it for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Keep up the painting, keep up the drawing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.